Marshall skips away. Marshall skips away. Marshall's still going. Marshall's got Richards coming up outside. Now inside. Arsenal have gone through an entire league campaign without losing. Bennett and the Dragons win the grand final. Whips that one away and Kane Williamson and his team now world test champions. Welcome back to another episode of the TGIF podcast. Thank God it's footy. Yeah. It's, a, it's a metaphorical raise, raise of the bat. bat. Yeah. Um, um, we'll take the lid off. Yeah, we've, we've notched up 100. Um, episode 100, it's uh, the this, this century. Um, plenty of other names out there, you know, out there for it, but it's the, it's the metaphorical raise of the bat there for us. We've made it this far. Um, and I guess you take a little asterisk next to as well, because 100 not out, we're not, we're, we're not out just yet. Yeah, um, we're, we're, we're still fighting and kicking. Um, not a bad, not a bad shift. Not a bad knock. Um, still plenty more, still plenty more to still, go. Still, still some first innings. Still some stuff going in the tank, there's um, no, no doubt about it. Yeah, um, uh, you don't want to be getting a, a sort of low hundred in a, on a, on a batting, batting deck, you know, you want to no. be pushing in, um, posting a good first innings total. Uh, exactly. Putting, putting the, sorry, taking the pressure off the bowlers. You know, we could have been bowled out for 30 and then you know you're in, you know, you're in serious trouble. Um, yeah, you're not doing too much you, with you that. You chuck that little asterisk up there, 100 not out. Um, it's a bugger that it falls in the middle of this sort of... I was going to say, basically just the NRL off-season, but it's actually, to be fair, it's not really limbo. There's so much going on. We've had cricket, we've had international rugby league, we've had football, we've had bloody, I don't even know if we've touched on it, we've had the Silver Ferns go 3-0. To be fair, it's uh, been a pretty big month against for, the, against the Aussies. For Kiwis we've, 4. Um, we've had a bit of America's Cup, I'm not into racing boats or driving cars in sport. I don't really think that their sports, that's just me. Um, but we've had an America's Cup. Um, so there is... We've there had is the opening of a brand new A-League franchise. We've, we had. I don't even know if we've touched on that. Now I'm back yeah. um, Bloody unreal. Auckland FC. Um, top of the table. Of the ta- we've got a top of the table clash this weekend up against Phoenix. So um, it'll be interesting to see those people roaming around Auckland in the yellow and black over the coming week or so. Um, to see, you know, to see who has stuck with the Phoenix. I mean, I'm never really a Phoenix fan, but you know, you see them going, oh, good on them, yeah, well done, mate. That sort of, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Whereas now, I think it's kind of like, I th- fuck, mate, I've, I've, I've watched one and a half. I missed the first half last, the last game on the weekend there, but one and a half games now. Uh, actually, no, maybe just one. I think I missed the whole game because I didn't even see the goal, and that was right at the end. Um, Two wins on the trot for for Auckland FC. This I don't know if it is. It's not really in the in the limbo. Basically, just a bugger that it's not. We've also had the NBA. That's the other one that I'm thinking of. The NBA is well underway. Yeah. Um, so, the really, conclusion: we're not in limbo. Not really. at all. We're not in limbo. There's couldn't be further sport, from it. Plenty of sport going on. It's just that the NRL is not not available to um, to you know to sort of beef that up a little bit. But um, we did have um, obviously some some footy there on over the weekend and we've also got um, some footy to get into this weekend and it's a, it's the big one there um, it'll be probably the I want to say the loudest game that we've seen at Mount Smart all year um, you'd think it'll be the most colourful game um, yeah, it'll look. be the Tonga fans will be out in force in their red Great atmosphere the last time we went to watch Tonga and Mount Smart. Mount Smart, uh, it's been sold out all season long, and yeah, no surprises that this one would have been sold out a long time ago as well. Um, yeah, Tonga, more or less a home game uh, up against it, the Kiwis. It kind of is, to be fair. Right? Uh, New Zealand's most populous city, but as we know, um, a fairly strong Tongan population. Um, that's the thing. That's it. And all all has got to be where you know the majority of your Pacific Islanders live, obviously. So, um, and even then, it's Tonga have kind of in the last three or four years, I think, have kind of become that team that a lot of people just go for. Partly just due to their fans, I think, as well. But they've just got such an entertaining team to watch. Um, and being honest, seeing how 
you know, having watched both teams play now, um, no reason why they can't go out there and beat us there, uh, this weekend. Yeah, um, look, Kiwi's coming off um, more or less, yeah, an identical result up against Australia. 22 points to 10 for the Kiwis, 18-0 uh, for the Tongans. Yeah, look, the Kiwis coming in with a, a sort of depleted-looking lineup, whereas Tonga, a, I don't know if they're, they're missing too many trips. That's a pretty them. crap lineup, that Kiwi squad, I'm not going to lie. Like, some of those, like, Phoenix Crossland, not not the nine you're after there. He had a great game, uh, but it's fair to say that it should... Just, it's him up against, you know, Harry Grant, you know, and it's it's just, yeah. it's outrageous. Like, if the if he's had been fit and firing, it would have been... Um, Griffin yeah. Neem, your starting prop. Although, White came on to start for him, I think, in the end. I think he did, you're right, but um, Griffin Neem obviously named there in the 10. But there you yeah. go. Like, yeah, it's obviously, we talked about it last week. You, you look at the name, I mean, it's one of those things on paper, you don't want to judge a game off paper, but when you look at it like that, looking at the names on the, on, on the paper there, it's it's nothing that's nice. You're bringing back a, you know, a just retired Sean Johnson. Um, you know, it's it's not an ideal position to be in. Yeah, it was it was a bit of a scratchy Kiwis lineup, to be fair, and um, it was going to be one of those games where everything would have had to go on uh, perfect for them or the Aussies would have had to have an off day and they didn't they didn't have an off day those um, kangaroos they seem to make the most of most of their chances there's obviously one that Lomax dropped uh, but I think that was towards the end yeah I mean a couple of years like a couple of great finishes from Lomax I thought you know it looked like he would have been well and truly wrapped up yeah I, I, I thought, I thought he, had a, he had a really good game well Warbrick though that was a great try. Move of the move of the game. That was a that say. was a great try. Um, awesome little uh, maneuver to uh, make Coates his teammate his teammate as well. Coates. There wasn't really too many things to um, I guess write home about from the Kiwis though. Really, I think the like Kiwis that. had some moments where um, they were dominating possession, parking themselves uh, well and We just down we didn't have that. There's, there's no territory, there. but. There's none, none of that, like, it's difficult. pizzazz, you know? Like, Chance is obviously a great player, but he's not He's not Dylan Brown. Nah. In the same. And it's, it's not Jaram Hughes. It's, it's just that. It's, um, it's the Sean that Johnson, there. obviously, great experienced player, but, yeah, uh, probably... Probably well, right. Probably could have called it a year earlier. Um, 100%. Sean Johnson, I think, potentially. Um, had I mean, he, he played, great he played right there, there on the weekend, I thought, and that's me saying that. Like, at moments, that's, um, that's, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, it would have been nice to have Deli M player of the year. Jerome Hughes out there running the ship for the Kiwis, but not to be. Um, I would have chucked, you know, where's, where's Foz? He's probably injured at the moment. Is he, is he another one of those players? Because surely he would have then been given a look in, you know? I imagine how cool it would have been to see Kieran Ford. He played Ford. last year. He played, yeah. We've well, seen him and Sean Johnson running it out again one last time. Um, just, it's just, I don't know if it's the line of, I, I think, yeah, Tonga were, Tonga were really good whole first half up against Aussie. But also, I mean, it's a very, like you said, it was a similar result. Very similar team in terms of like not really having that pizzazz, whereas I feel like Tonga have got that pizzazz in the forward pack. You know, like they've got a player like Ola Kawada who could break a game open. Um, you know, someone someone like that. Whereas I just don't. Tonga, know if yeah, I think Tonga. They'll definitely have some some positions where you'd worry as a Kiwis uh, fan. That's for sure. I feel like where we have it over them potentially is literally Sean Johnson's experience there in the seven. hundred um, percent. That would be a huge point. I guess you'd also look at Fisher Harris um, being the alpha dog there, but Tonga is certainly not short of uh, alpha dogs with the likes of no, no. Blake and Ola Kawadu doing their, their thing. So it's going to be a huge game this Saturday night and yeah, um, a massive uh, atmosphere. 5-1 all time against the Tongans. Um, that only loss did come on NZ soil back in the 2017 World yep. Cup. 
um, a bounce back and one that most recent one at Mount Smart you mentioned that we went to. Um, but yeah, look, it's 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 gonna, gonna be a tough, tough one. one. Regardless of that, it. it's gonna be yeah a young Kiwis team up against what feels like a Tong at home game. Um, <coughs> Yeah, certainly, certainly wouldn't be booking the Kiwi spot in the final. That's for no, sure. No, no. You'd like to hope, um, yeah, maybe just those those key positions. We might have might have the edge, but that Tongan side, um, yeah, they've they've got guns all over the park. That's for sure. Um, Toss yeah. of a coin, really. This one. Yeah, I think I think you probably are right there. It is. It's going to be. It's it's going to come down to who, whose night it is uh, there on Saturday. And I think you know that uh, that fourteenth man there of the of the crowd could be the one that possibly gets gets Tonga over the line in the end. Um, having that that crowd behind them, that uh, big sea of red. Um, I don't think that that could possibly be the the thing to get them over the line. Hundred percent. Who do we have in the um? the second division going up. At the this moment, week. you're possibly looking, who went on the weekend? Um, well, we have Fiji beat Cookies, did they not? Uh, I'm assuming so, yeah, I hadn't seen. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's woman anyway. But yes, smash them. So, probably Fiji. Or maybe PNG, but it'll be PNG. Because they beat Fiji. We've got PNG playing. So as long as they beat the cook up cookies, then. There are only three in the bottom as well. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah, so it'll be Fiji, PNG. It'll be PNG that play the, whoever loses this game on the weekend. Yeah, because they'll probably get enough of a win, eh? But regardless, it doesn't matter. They'll have more points. So... Interesting. Kiwis could be um, up against, up against uh, the Camels. Uh, the Camels and a little promotion relegation. So, or it could be something like Tonga versus Tonga versus PG, which would be a, an awesome matchup, I think. So... Um, we we'll have to wait and see come uh, end of the end of Sunday there to see what that matchup's going to be. Um, we did have a couple of Arsenal games there over the week as well. Um, three points in the Champions League, not the flashiest of results. We got a goal, we kicked a clean sheet, um, and, and managed to managed to take the win there. Yeah, pretty scratchy performance. Um... Had a, had a few moments in there in that game, but uh, not too many players having their best performance uh, out there in an Arsenal jersey. I thought Martinelli was pretty good, and um, whether or not you're calling it his goal, uh, deserved his assist for the own goal, I suppose you'd say, with it um, bouncing off the keeper's ass off the post. Um, but the big one for the week, the big talking point, obviously the, the big game there on Monday morning, two goals apiece. Uh, up against Liverpool, not the best performance, um, not the worst either at the same time. I think probably looking at the game overall, it's probably a fair result. Uh, we probably dominated that first half there and they, they came out in the second half and Definitely took the game um, with a little bit more emphasis than we did. Lots of talk that uh, we've just come out to park the bus there in the second half, which is not easy to sort of argue against. Um, it did look like we were looking a little bit negative, but I guess that's sort of what happens in football at times. You know, yep. you, you go, you get that goal, you, you tend to naturally sit back a bit, try and protect it. Uh, it wasn't to be Seller coming to break Gruner's hearts in the last five ten minutes there. Yeah, not the ideal, um, the ideal ending. I thought when we were two one up um, that we should have gone out there in minute three. There was a couple of stages there where we, we should have got ourselves another goal, and um, I think you know if we'd been able to maybe stretch that lead out to two, then we might have been. Or obviously, you know, if we finish three two, then we are okay, but. As it's one of those things, kind of, you know, going into the game, thinking that you've got no Saliba, 
there's no urgent guard. Saka was also looking like he wasn't going to be playing. So like, you're a, you're a pretty dwindled down team, and you're going into it going, we'll, we'll take a draw here up against this exactly. Liverpool team. You seem to be on a, you know, I mean, they only lost to Nottingham Forest. They're the only team that beat them. And hey, is that such a bad result? Woods on fire. Is that so. is that such a bad result at the moment? You know, are they going to be that team that yeah. hovers sixth, seventh around that area all season? And you know, Chris Wood scores twenty goals or something like that. So. You know, going into it, taking a draw, there's there's no there's no crimes, but I think at two one up it does definitely felt like lost points rather than, than gaining a draw. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Liverpool not at their best, I don't think, whatsoever. Um, you know, we managed to we managed to keep them fairly quiet, you know, throughout stages, but you lose two defenders, you're already missing one, it puts you into that, that position where you know you're you're in the shit really. So, um I guess the point, as we said, yeah, it's not the best, it's not the worst. Probably not not ideal half an hour in, an hour in, ideal coming into the game, I guess. Yeah. Um, and possibly the, the deserved result. I don't think either team deserved to win. Exactly. I think that's probably um, the underlying theme of uh, most of what I've been hearing, really. Neither team really does it deserve to either win or lose that one. Um, they both had their moments. Both sort of a little bit different styles, but um, merits to both. Unfortunately, yeah, um, I guess the, the sour taste uh, or the ill feeling kind of also comes with the fact that, yeah, Gabriel and Timber, what is, what's going to happen with them? Um, Gabriel looking like a, an impact injury from a little collision with Nunez, so... Yep. Usually that's a good sign that it's uh, like Hopefully, a minor thing rather I have, than anything I seen too major. Else, eh? um, you don't like to see someone twist their ankle and fall down an yeah, ankle. Yeah, or a strain of some sort. Uh, you know, like, twist their knee and fall down. You know, that's always an ACL. But yeah, more injury woes for Arsenal. So interesting to see what we do at the back there. Um, good to see we'll, we'll have Saliba back from his ban uh, for the next game. But next up's not going to be too too big of a worry. Preston in the cup. Um, I mean, it doesn't. Apparently, it's a knee injury. Is it absence could further strain? It doesn't actually say. Doesn't tell me anything. There. I didn't already know. And obviously, Timber Timber going off there as well. But it looks like probably just the cramp. I think. Yeah, I think I think a little bit earlier. I think Timber. What? How many? He only. They said they only missed the one game, but it must have been in and around um, what the break the, there. The, yeah, the break and um, that, because I swear he was injured longer than a week, but um, anyhow, maybe it was just one Premier League game. You missed the Champions League game as well. Or, um, yeah. Either way, we're going to... You're going to have to see You're going to be scratch, scraping a barrel. At least we do have Saliba back, as I said. Um, Not for this Preston game, yet. Yeah. Oh, because it's three in the, the league. It's just a one-game ban. Just a one-game ban? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Because um, it wasn't like a violent conduct. Oh, okay. Case, that's, so. that's epic. I thought it was out for a bit longer. So, uh, um, so what, are we, what are we thinking? Maybe we appealed it and got it reduced to a one-gamer. Is it going to be white at right back for Preston? Or is it party again? Because party was awesome. Probably one of our better players. Yeah. Do they go right Saliba, Kiwior? I'd say Kiwior's quite likely. Right yeah. Saliba, Kiwior, Lewis Scully. I'd really I like seeing him like, play. I think yeah. he's. I think he's going to be a good player. Obviously right had a had a little moment. Um, unlucky to to concede the goal down his side uh, against Liverpool, but. I guess, as you said, yeah, pressing for that third goal, uh, get caught on the counter, but yeah, he's looked good. Uh, yeah, I'm confident. I've really liked like him. He's been the, he's he's been the one to come out and play. Obviously, Ranieri is now as well, quite heavily involved. You know, which is awesome to see because we've we've had too many of these young players with that potential that you lose and not given the chance. And it seems to be this season where they are sort of having to be given that crack and. Um, so yeah, it's 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 interesting, you know, seeing seeing them come out, you know, so it'd be what Lewis Scully, Kiwi or Saliba White, or you do you chuck in sort of a Kiwi or left back, Saliba White party sort of combination. Um, Arteta's, he's, I mean, he tinkers a wee bit, you know. 
Um, what are we looking at with Preston there? Uh, where are they sitting? I wouldn't have a clue how they, what their sort of, how they play, what their jam is at the moment. Uh, Championship, League One? Championship. Championship. Now, I'm going to predict like Mid a... table? Yeah, maybe like an 11th, 12th. Uh, currently... We might be looking at a little bit of rotation, I don't think. 16th in the, in the Championship. Yeah. Um, their most recent game they played... Uh, oh, where are you? They played... Plymouth Argyle on the weekend, they drew 3 all. they went 3 nil up, and then, yeah, I mean, God, Plymouth Argyle haven't been looking too flash, obviously, under Rooney there, and um, to go 3 nil up, three minutes into the second half, and then come back and go 3 all. it's not what you're after. They've got Liam Brady, they've got Sam Greenwood, they've got Alfie Whiteman, I know, that's Ben Whiteman. Uh, that's kind of about it. Uh, Free Woodman in goal. Um, probably got a few other dudes and I'm uh, Ryan Ledson, Corey Evans. Is it Corey Evans? Chet Evans. Yeah, I don't really Chet, like they've got the fucking you can't those, lose a team with a guy named Chet. Those crackers, you know? Uh you know Chets? Yeah. You can't be named after a cracker. So I mean ideally clean sheet, go out there, we see a little bit of rotation. Um we see what a uh, couple of these young fellas get a game and then hopefully get out there on the weekend and, and batter Newcastle. Yeah, look, it's 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 going to be a good one um, up against Newcastle. Obviously, um, a good chance for us to bounce back. Is, it, is that one at home or is it away? That is. Let me see. I just had that up. Um, we are on the weekend... Away, away at St James's Park. One thirty Sunday morning. Um, that's going to have to be a. Yeah, it's a tempting time. It's a. It's definitely a stay up. I think for me, um, maybe maybe a nap these days. The way it's been going, but I think it's a it's a stay up. Um, they're not in good form though. No, just the, they're, just they're the two points uh, from their last five Premier League outings. So hopefully we can keep that up for them. Um, two wins and a draw against them. Um, ever since their, I guess, recent purchase um, from the Saudis. And then before that, it was eight in a row for us, um, including an FA Cup tie. So recent dominance, I suppose you'd say, over the Newcastle. I'm mean, hoping we can continue. Yeah, um, they've, they've not really been um, much of a, of a bogey side or anything like that. They should be a team that we can come up against and do well, but it's... It's it's a hard one because they've got some they've got some good players but yeah they're just not they're in a, in a bit of a rut at the moment and, and struggling to struggling to take the three points come the come the ninety minutes so it is one of those games you expect us you know if you if you're going out there to challenge for the title these are the games you need to be winning yeah you're going Trips to, have to St James's Park you can't let uh, Man City stretch that lead uh, much further than five points no the, the draw is not good for either either of us really in yeah. that situation uh, Arsenal or Liverpool. Um, obviously City jumping back ahead because Liverpool were ahead of them, were they? Liverpool were so, ahead going into the game week, but um, they got the win against Southampton the day before. Yeah, a jammy, a jammy little one nil there, you know, uh, five minutes into the game and then not, not managed to score anymore. I imagine the amount of uh, fantasy managers that have triple captain Harlan there up against Southampton only for him to just get the one. Um, but you're right, we can't have them extending that lead any further, so it's, it's, it's going to be one of those games we go out there and take the three points. 100%. Uh, couldn't, couldn't have said it better myself. Um, what's going on in the world of darts? It's, it was all on, uh, all on over the weekend. They, they had the European Championships now. It's every, because you had your tour card last two years and it's all done off how much money you've earned, you go in and you win a tournament, you win $100,000, then the following year, you're defending that prize money because once then that tournament is over, you obviously you made the money, you got paid the 100000 they don't take it back off you, but on your order of merit, once the new person gets that money, you lose that on your order of merit. So there's we've come to this sort of time of the year where there's a lot of people either defending a lot of money 
uh, or not really defending much at all. You've got people like Michael Smith who's def- going into the end of the year defending that world champs from a couple of years ago, where if he doesn't go well in tournaments, all of a sudden we see this huge drop-off from him. He's been involved in the Premier League. He's been in that top 10 there for a while now. Loses, I don't know how much money it was that he won for that. It's the, it's the most in the, on the circuit. So it's a, a huge chunk. But also, yeah, lots of players who are coming into tournaments who weren't there two years ago or weren't there the year before that, uh, the, sorry, one year ago. And um, they, they're coming into a position where if they go well and, you, you know, you, you make 20, 30, 1,000, you're jumping up a high in places before we go into um, you know things like the the world champs at the end of the year and even higher up the table that sort of conversation there for the Premier League obviously we saw Lilla, you know chucked in there last year and it's usually that I think it's the top four and then they sort of pick and choose from elsewhere on base, basically what's going to make them a, a heap of money and you've, you've got players like Michael Smith who, who could now fall out someone like obviously Humphreys is going to be there MVG is going to be there, but you've got players like Gary Anderson, Chizzy, who are playing some awesome darts at the moment. Won a few things, and all of a sudden they're in the top four, and you, you're seeing them in the Premier League. And on the weekend, what was it, the Euro Championships? I think it was. Um, MVG out. I want to say round one, round two. Gizzy was out early. Uh, Littler, I think, out in the. I want to say maybe round of sixteen or the quarters, and then the Humphreys quarters or the semis. Okay, I think quarters possibly. Um, and we saw, I believe, two players in their first TV final. One, definitely, Richie Edhouse made his first televised final um, up against Jermaine Watermano, who's been playing some all right darts at the moment. But Richie Edhouse, first final, um, can't remember who he played along the way, but I think he might have had a couple of big scalps. Goes on and wins it. Um, so that I think is one hundred twenty-five thousand there onto his order of, order of merit. So all of a sudden it takes this huge jump up there. Um, where are they this weekend? I'm not too sure. That was the other nice thing about the old um, the old Labor Day there on Monday, um, following the Arsenal game and realizing that there was some some darts to some, sort of to tune into and being able to watch the final, yeah. um, which doesn't happen very often. Now. Looks like nothing this weekend. Yeah, what are we, 24th or the 28th? Uh, yeah, nothing this weekend, but the Grand Slam starts up next week, and that's um, that'll be a really um, a really cool cool tournament. I think I've just seen something before there. Uh, no, not actually telling me who's who's involved there on the app. I'm not really a, a fan of the LPDC app rather than the, the Safari. But I have just seen here, we do have a couple of players' championships now. Has the man who shot a 66 there over the weekend, Hopai Puha, has he made the trip over there for another couple of events? Now, it does look... I thought I'd seen on his on his Facebook that he'd said he was heading back over there, but possibly not. His name doesn't seem to be popping up there in event 29. And... I would imagine if he's not playing in the first event, he's probably also not playing in the second event. I've also just seen that it's alphabetically sorted by the last name, so I don't have to scroll through everyone. No, it's not. He's not there. Uh, two card holders absent. Hope I puha. So, gonna be in a tricky position, I think, for him. He's gonna have to at some stage have a little run just to just to get a little bit of money in the in the kitty there. I think their hopes, but hey, if you're going out there and shooting what four under at your at your golf club champs and, and taking the win when you're when you're a professional dance player, I'm sure you're doing something right. No, um, it's probably us, another short one, off season. Um, but as always, thank you for tuning in. That uh, that big one, the hundred, um, we've made it. Give us a like, give us a five star, get involved in all your socials. Enjoy your week ahead. Enjoy whatever sport you're getting involved with. Um, If you're having a punt, do it responsibly. Um, And we'll see you here for the next 100. Yeah, sounds good for me. See you then. Ciao. Marshall skips away. Marshall skips away. Marshall's still going. Marshall's got Richards coming up outside. Now inside. Arsenal have gone through an entire league campaign without losing. Bennett and the Dragons. 
whips that one away and Kane Williamson and his team are now world test champions.